I'm Sharon Bill. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Last weekend I had the great joy of joining in Nantwich Choral Society's Come and Sing event and basically those days are an annual occurrence where you just sort of pick up a score, rehearse for the day and then have a concert at night. Just a one-shot um, rehearsal and performance. And we were singing this year, this was my first year actually, and this year they were singing Mendelssohn's Elijah, a massive oratorio. However, before we even sang a note, it was such a great day, even on a social level. Now, Nantwich is about sort of 20 minutes, half an hour from here. However, people had travelled as far as um, from Norfolk, from Buckinghamshire. So it was so great to just meet all sorts of different people with one common sort of uh, love of singing. And uh, sitting next to us was a lady who'd come from Sheffield. So of course you introduce yourself. You say, hi, I'm Sharon. Hi, how are you? And what, what choir do you sing in? And she said, oh, I sing with a Sheffield Bar Choir. And my friend sitting next to me said, oh, I used to sing with those years ago when I was at university. Oh, when were you at university? And it was sort of, oh, back in you, whatever. And uh, the lady said, oh, yes, um, I would have been singing then as well. So they'd obviously unwittingly met before. And then she said, oh, well, I went to uh, Keele University, which is just literally the university up the road from us. And uh, so strangely, we'd had a sort of a crossing of boundaries and met sort of in the middle to have a little sing-song decades later. And as we were chatting, some really funny stories came out because then she said to me and my friend, she says, oh, and what choir do you sing in? And I said, oh, yes, we sing in Ceramic City Choir. And she says, oh, I heard those sing. Um, oh, back in the 60s, so uh, before I was there. And um, she said, oh, yes, I remember hearing them sing in the Victoria Hall. Um, I've sung there many times. It's a beautiful venue. And she said, oh, yes, they all sang in. Um, wearing white dresses back then. And my friend said, oh yes, my mum told me about that because her mum sang in the choir before. And she, I suppose after the war, maybe, um, people hadn't got so many glad rags to put on and fabric wasn't so easily come by to make new uniforms and so on. And she says, basically, everybody used to sing in their wedding dresses. I think, oh, that sounds a bit weird. It's a little bit um, Dickensian Miss Havisham to me, that is, now. But um, So I thought, oh, that was really interesting. I never knew that. And I've sung in Ceramic City Choir for, um, well decades really and then my friends uh, we were sitting in St Mary's it's a beautiful um, venue to be singing in and uh, my friend says I'm sure I've sung here uh, before years and years ago well she sung there before of course but she said um, I've sung here years and years ago she says and I'm sure we were helping out with a Christmas concert for some reason just bolstering the numbers and um, she says bizarrely at the end of the day at the end of the performance we all got paid in sprouts I think ah only in little rural parts of England would you ever get paid in sprouts what a bizarre thing she says it would have been okay but um I don't like sprouts. There's not really a great deal you can do with sprouts, is there? You either like them or you don't. So that was a bit of a waste. I hopefully, just the joy of singing will have been payment enough. It was also a great time to catch up with the old friends who used to sing in the choir. So we met up with a lady and she was such a gracious host to us for the day, shuffling in us between rehearsals and she booked us a lovely meal and so on. Because the way the day went, we had a, a two hour rehearsal with the piano, then we went off for some lunch. And uh, so we had a lovely lunch date with uh, catching up with friends. And um, I was there for a jolly, and so I thought, well, I'm gonna have a glass of wine with my lunch. And I'm not sure that was such a great idea because um, drinking a glass of wine at dinner time always makes me feel supremely sleepy. And I hadn't quite um, ac accounted for how tiring the day would be. So uh, feeling a little, um, sleepy shall we say we went back and did another two hours two hours rehearsal so the first two hours were just a rehearsal with the chorus members uh, at the piano beautiful piano in the church there and then after lunch um so we'd had stodgy italian and a glass of wine uh, not the best things for singing and then um we then had a second rehearsal for two hours with um the organ 
and the soloists. And then we had a little break because, I mean, the poor conductor had been going all day long. My voice was tired, but he must have been utterly exhausted. So we had an hour and a half, perhaps, um, before the actual performance. And um, so this, again, our lovely host, our friend Helen, she um, took us back to her, her house and we had sandwiches and chit chat and then we all went to the performance. Um, now thankfully I, ha I have sung this before so it wasn't completely a matter of sight reading, it's a hefty oratorio um, but thankfully I could remember from singing this years and years ago and so I'd had a fab day already um, and now we'll get to the music and um, this oratorio is absolutely divine. Mendelssohn was quite um, a prodigy, really. I think we would call him a polymath, where he was an absolute whiz as a linguist, as a mathematician, as an athlete. I think he was a, an expert rower. He was a fabulous artist working in marvellous watercolours. And thank goodness he turned his brilliant mind to music as well. And Queen Victoria absolutely favoured Mendelssohn. In. and I think it was her who said she that he was sort of the Mozart of the 19th century and when you listen to his sublime melodies his beautiful lyricism it's easy to see that connection I definitely agree that he was truly um, the Mozart of his day and he set his skills to work on uh, this production of Elijah now um, an oratorio is a biblical work so it's a bit like an opera where you've got um, uh, solo items, airs, whereas, you know, in um, opera you would then have um, arias and recitatives, they're just called airs here, or quartets and duets, and then the choral items as well, um, giving depth and volume to the piece. There would have been no um, sort of dressing up, no costumes, no scenery, but other than that, it was sort of very much the same sort of setup. Uh, however, it's always a biblical text. However, the text of Elijah is so dramatic. The story itself from the Old Testament is so dramatic. And um, Mendelssohn's musical setting to this absolutely spurs the drama on. And I don't think today we can quite appreciate how moving that drama would have been because now we're used to movies and sound scores to accompany music. But there, there was no TV. And so I think the drama of the day back then would have been so striking. However, it was interesting to note that on the actual performance, the soloists made the most of that dramatic element and kind of wandered around and mingled a little bit with the audience. Uh, so that was really quite captivating. Um, in fact, Mendelssohn himself had a little bit of a dispute over the dramaticism of the work. And so in the end, he attempted uh, and, well, and he did finish the libretto himself, um, and so he set his linguistic skills to work. I think it took him from sort of initial idea to completion about 10 years, so he really, really gave it his full attention. And I, I absolutely love um, his text. I mean, one of the words he used is... Um, extirpate the foe. Whoever uses the word extirpate. Um, so it's a brilliant text as well as the music and, and that's all down to Mendelssohn as well. It was premiered in Birmingham in, um, let me think, 1846 I think it was, something like that. Yeah, I think it was 1846. Um, in front of an audience of 2,000. And Birmingham's not too far from here. I'm sort of in the middle of England, in the Midlands, and sort of to the north, our first city is Manchester, but just sort of at an equal distance to the south is Birmingham. And our performance uh, in humble little Nantwich, which is a beautiful market town, a very historical town. In fact, the week before um, was all the celebrations of the Battle of Nantwich, where people were in costumes with pikes and so on. Um, however, the performance was much more humble. In fact, it was a very unusual performance because the whole point of the day was um, for the singers. 
we'd paid you know, a very nominal sum to go and sing for the day. The audience was a, a byproduct, really, and so strangely, the the choir was about three or four times the size of the audience, and so the choir took up the main congregational area of the church, absolutely filling the church, and then the audience were just like a, a smattering of a few people sitting in the choir store. So it was a really unusual setting to have everything kind of backwards. The, the choir was massive, the audience was tiny, and we were facing completely the opposite way to we normally would um, for a performance. However, it was such a beautiful day and we got through it fine, thankfully. I think quite a few of us had sung it before. And so there are so many beautiful pieces, uh, movements, and I think there are 42 movements in, in total. We did cut a few of those, otherwise we really would have been there all day and all night. And uh, by the end, my voice was really starting to give up as it was. However, there was a little bit of a revolt. They were going to cut a really beautiful number and I'm afraid there was an uprising in the ranks because we just simply couldn't miss the movement, Lift Thine Eyes. Uh, and I've put links to quite a few of my favourites in the cards and in the description so you can listen to some of the um, most beautiful parts that I've particularly enjoyed singing. However, I do recommend that you just, if you ever get the chance, if you can get your hands on a copy, to listen through the whole work. I mean, if you can listen to it live or even sing it, I heartily recommend that you absolutely jump at the chance. It's a most beautiful work, so please do listen to the ones that I've put in the links and listen to all of it if you possibly can. And thank you for listening to me. I hope that you've enjoyed that. Thanks again. Speak to you next time. Bye. Bye.